so we can we can go through yeah. it. Then you yeah, take, yeah, yeah. you take what yeah, you want and what, what works. Okay. Yes. So um, how many questions? <laughs> ah, I had um, uh, wanted to reply by email, but uh, yeah. of course I, I don't know the details of your activities. Yeah, so yeah, and uh, you asked me for a pin video. Mm -hmm. um, and just off the record, of course, I think everything which is um, directly supporting uh, people who are suffering from the consequences of uh, 311 um, um, is, uh, has to be a look at. That's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, sometimes I think it's good that uh, you and uh, non-Japanese are supporting the victims, but shouldn't it be the government, shouldn't it be the Japanese people, shouldn't it be those who make, made a lot of money from uh, nuclear power generation, uh, providing all those who are negatively affected and uh, are you know, literally victims of what happened to them. Ago, uh, shouldn't they pay and shouldn't they um, do all the care for these uh, people? Um, that's, that's not doubting your activities. It's, um, it's always good to have this solidarity outside of Japan, but um, sometimes uh, I'm afraid about the, the huge gap between the perception outside of Japan and the perception within Japan. Within Japan, as you might know, still um, there are strong voices, influential voices, and a kind of hidden or silent perception that there weren't so much victims, there were so much, uh, there were so so much uh, damages uh, uh, caused by uh, Fukushima, and this leads us to um, the point that everything we discuss about what happened 11 years ago is, is not only power free but extremely penetrated by strong interest and that it's so important to, um, to get an independent understanding of what, what happened, why it happened, how it happened and what can be learned from and how it can be avoided. And still the government, still influential people, still mass media, still uh, academics uh, playing down the negative effects of uh, um, the nuclear uh, disaster in Fukushima on, uh, for instance, what you care about. Not only the physical health, but the mental health of, of people who, who suffered from it. Um, and I think the solidarity you're providing and the support you're providing should be combined also with strong demands and, and criticism to those who, who, who are denying the need for what you are doing, right? By saying, hey, there are no problems. And still, still uh, I think in the last month we had uh, already one or few, uh, many releases that uh, that there is no relation between Fukushima and uh, Kansa, for instance. Even though it's the majority opinion that Chernobyl led to um, uh, thyroid cancer. Uh, of a, lot, uh, a lot of children were suffering uh, which were close to Chernobyl. So, that's why I would like to avoid uh, these, yes. these questions because, again, I don't know um, uh, really well I, I know the fact that you are doing this. Uh, Professor Mariotti was, Professor Ressa was telling me that uh, you're doing such things, which which is nice. Um, there were only one thing I think where you said, um, "Is it is it still needed? Right? Mm -hmm. Should it be continued?" Uh, of, of course, if if you have uh, children and parents in Japan, which which will come to uh, uh, go to Italy to. Uh, put a distance to um, uh, what they normally, what they have experienced and what they are experiencing in, in, in Japan, um, it's, that's good. But I think it's good that you question yourself and people like me about is it, is it okay or is it efficient to continue what we did in the past. Um, just read that uh, still uh, 
38,000 people have not returned to their original homes in Fukushima. So, and um, of course, I've taken in being in Japan, I've noticed that uh, a lot of people escaping from Fukushima were uh, confronted with uh, discrimination, um, even not expressed, uh, but uh, just shown by the distance to, to the people who, who were flooding from, from Fukushima. So, but this kind of discrimination is, is always existing in Japan. We, we have also some issues with COVID. Uh, 19, where uh, those who were infected were also treated just like as being bad guys. Uh, and you know that these uh, informal ways of, of discriminating people and uh, keeping distance to them can put a lot of pressure on, on these people who are already suffering from being COVID infected or being uh, um, uh, affected by uh, what happened 11 years ago. Okay, let's. So, uh, so far, so yeah. far. <laughs> My stance to your questions. Yeah, of course, uh, I, I didn't understand that you might not know much about this uh, yes. organization. Um, I was asked to put these questions mm -hmm. in here by our <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think this was a great, uh, great answer. Yeah, okay, so, good. Okay, then <laughs> use good. it if it, if it works. No, no, it was great. Yeah. Okay, so first thing I would like to ask you. Yeah, please. Is uh, that one one thing that I recall from your lectures is that you said many times that uh, Fukushima was not a natural disaster and yes. that it was man-made, and also that lessons have not been learned yes. from Fukushima. So I want to talk to you to explain that. It again. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, just came back from from the lecture, yeah. um, uh, and uh, of course I used also updated uh, statistics, but uh, more or less the message was the same. Um, and as you said, um, those who are responsible and were responsible uh, for what happened 11 years ago, saying that, first of all, natural catastrophe. So uh, it's correct that uh, you can't foresee or um, forecast uh, the occurrence of earthquakes um, uh, correctly. It's still possible. Uh, earthquakes are the release of, of energy generated within Earth plates or as a release of energy created by tensions between Earth plates. But as you know, uh, Japan is the place with the highest tectonic activity where four big earth plates are um, uh, producing huge tensions and uh, um, when you plot the map of these tectonic activities together with the map where nuclear power plants are located then you see where the highest risk in the world is concentrated and it's, it is obviously Japan. Of course, there, there were always a lot of, of reasons for, for starting uh, with nuclear power generation in Japan for building at maximum uh, 56 reactors in, in this tectonic active, uh, tectonically active mm -hmm. region. But the interesting thing is, it is far from being a natural catastrophe because there, were, there has been always warning voices not only from anti-nuclear activists, but from scholars, um, scientists, um, and even from managers, managers and employees within the electric power companies saying, hey guys, uh, we have to prepare for uh, tsunamis, and we have to prepare for tsunamis uh, which we, we have a high probability that they exceed um, the assumed maximum height of the tsunami. TEPCO had, has assumed for all their plannings um, a maximum height of 5.7 meters of tsunami. And as we know, as a matter of fact, with hindsight, um, the wave of the tsunami which hit nuclear power plant number one and cut off all electricity supply for the cooling system of uh, four of the active reactors at that time was three times higher, three times. So the question is, 
where there are warnings saying exactly that. And they were exactly saying that, even within the company. Not only scientists say, hey, almost a thousand years ago, we, we, we have recordings and we have evidence that um, tsunamis uh, hit the coast of Fukushima with a height of more than 10 meters. Even in, in the bureaucracy of the overseeing ministry, they were saying, okay, if we have evidence for tsunamis in the, in, in the past exceeding the assumed roughly six meters, then we have to do something about it. And then we have to rewrite all regulations and have to prepare for it. And reflecting this position of the overseeing ministry or the bureaucrats within the ministry, employees, middle level managers, started to check. And they found out finally the same, that in the past we had tsunamis exceeding 10 meters. And then, as a consequence of that, they, they tried to get an internal consensus about and reporting to CEO, to executive managers, uh, those who are supposed to take decisions and to reduce the risk or to take more preparations in order to reduce the risk. But these guys played down the risk, they silenced these voices, uh, they ignored the warnings. The question is why? And as often in these cases, it's about money. Because rebuilding the protection against tsunamis would cost some million euros or some billion yen. But they said no. They said no, we, we cannot afford, we, we won't like to spend the money, shut up. The consequence is what happened 11 years ago. So far, it's clearly a man-made catastrophe. There were voices. It, and the argument that it's natural catastrophe, it was out of any projection, Solte guy. It was a catastrophe which happens all 10,000 years. These three justifications of what happened, or justification of being not prepared against the tsunami, are lies, simple lies. Of course, ah, where are they lies? Are they those who downplayed the warning voices um, to be held responsible in a legal way was subject of courts, trials in Japan. But all facts are pointing to to the fact that uh, all facts are uh, finally supporting uh, or contradicting this uh, the same natural catastrophe, uh, unforeseeable, uh, unpredictable, uh, unavoidable. It's the opposite. Um, and the question is, so, no, ju just one remark. I don't, I'm, I'm not a specialist in nuclear power plant technology, but what I learned and what I understand is the emergency power generators, which are supposed to provide electricity for the cooling systems in case the main electricity supply goes down, were located under sea level, right, uh, behind walls, but, and there were not only warning voices saying, hey guys, we should prepare for tsunamis higher than 10 meters, maybe 50 meters or 20 meters. There were also voices to say, hey, we have to relocate our emergency um, uh, power generators um, at the top of the hills, which were 30 meters above sea level. But even this, has been, hasn't been done. Of course, now they are doing it at all nuclear power plants. And of course, they have to pay a lot of money for all, all the measures. And this leads us to the question, is nuclear power really cheap? It is not cheap. And it costs a lot of money. And still, still in the region of Japan. Okay, so... Um 
speaking about uh, nuclear power as a cheap energy source, yeah. um, as you know, <laughs> uh, especially in the EU, there has been this tendency of um, uh, implementing nuclear power plants as a clean, safe, even green, <laughs> mm. and cheap, mm. especially a uh, source of energy. Um, what? Do you think it is uh, a way of clean or cheap energy, and uh, especially is this a valuable alternative to carbon and uh, a way of decarbonization? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, to keep the argument clear, I think it's good to first of all separate the issue of um, is it clean and is it cheap. Um, the interesting thing is we discuss this issue right now in the moment where solar um, solar power generation or wind power generation becomes cheaper and cheaper. And uh, I can remember an article in Nihon Kisa Shimbun, uh, which is far from being an anti-nuclear activist-led uh, newspaper, uh, but close to big business. Um, with a headline, uh, the article was, I think, released in March last year, uh, and uh, it had kind of shocking headline. It was saying, Midori no Sekai to Kuroi Nihon. And they raised an interesting statistics uh, and a graph and that shows different countries. And the cheapest source of Electricity generation measured against the money you have to spend for a thousand kilowatt hours. And it was only Japan in the world where the cheapest one, first of all, is hard coal. In all other countries, on the map released by the newspaper, it was green, so renewable. And the money, Japanese have to pay for it is still the highest amount, even though it is the cheapest in Japan, but it's hard to work. And it means, measured against the big mainstream towards renewables, Japan is behind the curve. So far, and, and now let's come to, to the issue of, of nuclear. Um, the decision of the EU and I think it was the EU Commission, um, as all decisions about what should be subsidized and what not, is interest driven, is power penetrated by huge political power. And it is not a scientific decision, I think it's a political decision. And politics is about interest, um, make them realize and use your power for that. Um, and as you know, and I'm still convinced that um, it reflects the truth, is that it was France and the French government, French government uh, pushing for um, the acceptance of uh, nuclear power generation as green, as sustainable, uh, because, and that's the detailed background, EDF, which is uh, the, the French nuclear power operator, is now under deep water. So they're facing bankruptcy, needing billions of money, and the main shareholder of EDF is the French government. And in order to justify, no government can afford now to spend billions saving or rescuing a, a, com a company with billions euros from the taxpayer and being criticized for spending this money for something which is not sustainable. So you have to justify it. And of course, the strong argument is for nuclear power, of the argument of, of the proponents for nuclear power is always, it doesn't release CO2, and it is cheap. And it makes us independent or less dependent from imports of carbon fuels. Um, and this argument 
is, is getting stronger against the background of the aggression of Russia um, uh, into, into Ukraine. Nobody, for, for political reasons, nobody wants to pay Russia for uh, importing uh, natural gas and oil from Russia, knowing that the money will be used maybe or mainly for military purposes and financing a war against Ukraine. So, this actual background or the current background might support the option of nuclear power generation. But again, is it true? Yes, of course, if, if you can now the, the, the French, the French are less dependent from imports of, of gas and uh, oil from Russia. Correct. Right. That's correct. But is it cheap? Obviously not. Why is EDF in such big trouble? It, right? So here we have a connection. And um, the argument, it, it's not only about France uh, in, in Japan. That's my field of expertise. In Japan, it's always a strong, strong argument to say it's cheap. But interestingly, even the government today is accepting that in the upcoming 10 years, it's not anymore the nuclear power generation, which is the cheapest option. Now, actually, they, they have to accept that solar power generation is getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, wind has its problems, but it's also getting cheaper and cheaper. And the problem with all these uh, cost calculations and comparison between different sources of, of, of energy uh, used for uh, uh, generating uh, electricity, the problem with that is always what do you include in your calculation? And a lot of, especially those who are finally concluding that nuclear power generation is the cheapest, often exclude indirect costs. Indirect costs such as subsidies given for R&D, given for uh, building nuclear power plants, and also the cost now in Japan, the government and all have to pay for uh, cleaning up the mess of what happened 11 years ago. And of course, that's, that's a reason also why the cost, calculating the cost, estimating the cost, how much do we have to pay for cleaning up the mess? is always a battle. There's always, of course, those who are in favor of nuclear power plants play the cost down. Those who are against want to have the cost as high as needed. I, I did my own calculations and uh, when you put all the costs which occurred due to what happened 11 years ago, due to the meltdown of three nuclear reactors, then, then nuclear power generation is out of any competition against all other sources of um, uh, power generation. If you exclude these costs and say, hey, it happens every 10,000 years or it was a natural disaster and it shouldn't be included, then of course it takes away uh, 5 to 10 yen per kilowatt hour. Which, which makes a huge difference when we talk about uh, um, a range of 5 to 10, 15 uh, yen per kilowatt hour in total cost. Um, so I think the, the argument it's the cheapest one um, is, uh, is not any more viable. Um, and what's also forgotten is it's only cheap in operating because the price for the fuel is cheap compared to the fuel of uh, thermal power plants, you, right? Um, but nuclear power plants are much more expensive when you build them, so the so-called capital cost. And now when you look at the current, and in order to play down this risk, what do nuclear power plant operators do? They operate nuclear power plants longer and longer. In Japan, we had initially, initially, and uh, due to the fact of, of uh, tax-related things and depreciation, 
Normally a nuclear power plant is supposed to be run 20 years. Now they can be run 40 years and almost all nuclear power, react uh, nuclear power reactors in Japan installed and in operation are designed, are former or old design um, produced by General Electric or Westinghouse. And when you look at them, they always say, uh, okay, they can run longer than 20 years, but maybe 30 years, then it gets tricky. And the risk increases even more when you use not uranium as the fuel, but plutonium. And the difference is that used fuel, used uranium, will be or has been reproduced in La Hague, France or in Great Britain and is supposed to be reproduced in our body and then you burn plutonium. But they will be burned in reactors which are not designed or were not designed originally for burning plutonium but uranium which increases the risk and should limit the duration of operation. And nuclear power plant operators now even think about 60 years, which obviously increases the risk um, of, of operating failures. But they do this in order to keep the cost low. Why? Because building new nuclear power plants is today so expensive. And I think that the, the striking examples are the one that the new type reactors um, designed uh, uh, by EDF um, and Areva. EDF is the operator, Areva is the power plant builder, both French, and they do it in Great Britain and they do it in Finland. And uh, they're exceeding the projected cost by a factor of 400%. Now, 400%, four times more than they started. And just to give you a number, it's now a double digit billion euro number for building new reactors. Um, and this money, when you run, I think this, this huge amount of capital cost now to be spent for nu new generation nuclear power plants under the new s safety regulations is, it, uh, is, is making it impossible that you can recoup these costs. And what you should take into account, double digit billion euros spent in another way would have much more bigger effect than just building uh, these new nuclear power plants. We discussed, by the way, always the, the issue of producing electricity, but hey, to save the world, it's, it's equally important not only to say, how do we produce more electricity? Isn't it also an, an, an equally important necessity to, to discuss and to spend money in our brain and our energy for building a society which, which consumes less energy. Not meaning that, that we have to um, uh, uh, reduce and downshift all activities. But why is it that we, that we focus only on how do we produce more electricity? Isn't it, isn't it all, also an even more important to think that how can we reduce electricity without limiting or reducing the convenience or the modernity of our society? And Japan should have a lot of potential with regard to, to, to this challenge. In history, hey, Japan was famous for, for having um, housing, buildings, um, uh, saving a lot of energies. Right? And th th there was always also close connection between when, when you live in Japan and you, you see the, this disaster heating system, right, based on air conditioners. Yes, it was pushed by, um, by, by the power companies uh, in, uh, to, to sell the access of electricity, the excessive use of electricity. And one way of it is this heating and cooling system. Cooling, okay, there seems to be at the moment no, no other alternatives if you have old buildings, but um, uh, when it comes to heating. Right, the, the heat, the, the mo in, in the most ex expensive way. But it's not that the Japanese consumers or households are stupid. No, it was uh, exactly an, 
um, a result and an outcome of electricity companies having a lot of nuclear power plants. And nuclear power plants, once they start to operate, they cannot adjust their, their output, right? Um, and that leads us also to another issue. Is it really green, right? First of all, the construction is not green. Second, what about nuclear fuel? Is, is, the, is, is the mining of nuclear fuel, the processing of mining of uh, nuclear fuel, at the beginning of the cycle included, not to mention what happens to the used fuel, right? Now they sell us the, the, the reprocessing or uh, the breeder uh, reactors. A breeder reactor is now in Stalmit. It was just only Japan still spending a lot of money for the breeding technology, using, using used fuel and to increase it uh, by breeding. Um, processing plant in our money, um, uh, it's, it's a grave of billions uh, of euros. Um, and still not operating, and still extremely dangerous to reproduce used uranium and to transform it into plutonium. Right? Japan has now 60 tons of plutonium. Um, um, in, in Japan, I think it's something around 10 tons. Um, and at the reprocessing facilities in France and the UK, it's uh, something around 50 tons which is a huge amount and always a concern for especially democratic US governments and say, is it really good that the Japanese have 60 tons of plutonium because plutonium can easily be used for nuclear weapons. So, fuel issue. And if you really include all, all the energy spent, all the burdens for the natural environment, then the full calculation changes. Second, Global um, CO2 emission. Um, one strong argument is say, oh, uh, operating of nuclear power plants is free of nuclear uh, of, of CO2 emissions compared to coal-fired um, uh, coal thermal power plants or gas-fired thermal plants. Um, yes, that's true. But isn't CO2 an issue because it causes global warming. What about cooling nuclear power plants? Why are nuclear power plants in Europe? Mainly on big rivers. In Japan, due to the lack of steady flowing big rivers on the coastlines, which are the result of former earthquakes. Yeah, because they need millions of tons of cooling water. Hey, what are they doing? They are releasing warm water to cool the reactors into the sea. Is this warming effect included in the calculation? Next one. As I said, nuclear power plants can just run steadily. You, you can't adjust the output of nuclear power plants. Right? Hey, but the fundamental nature of an le electricity system is that due to the volatility in the demand of electricity, you have to adjust the supply. So you have to have a flexible system, which by the way is not only a challenge for a nuclear power based electricity system, also for renewables. Right? So renewables, the problems of renewables can be solved only. Um, if, if we have a good combination between different sources, but also efficient systems of storage. The, pro the, the normal combination to provide the system in Japan with the sufficient flexibility in the supply, in the generation, is a very, very deadly combination. It's a combination of nuclear power plants as the base load, LNGs, and an increasing amount of hard coal. And that's why I come back to the Nikkei article which I mentioned, Midori Sekai Kuroi Nihon. The cheapest way is hard coal. And um, still when, when, when you go by the order of the weight of 
different sources of, of generation. Then you can go, now the biggest weight is LNG, which is far from good for the environment because LNG is imported and it's liquid and it should be liquefied and needs a lot of energy. It had to be cooled down to more than minus 100 degree. It releases methane while being transported and had to be uh, again uh, re-liquefied before it is burned in thermal power plants. That's the energy source number one in Japan. But an increasing weight is hard coal. And what, the problem with LNG is not that it is not only not green, it is also expensive, extremely expensive due to the facts I just mentioned. The cheapest one is hard coal, but hard coal is the brother or the sister of nuclear power plants in Japan. And that's why the total CO2 emission of the J Japanese elect uh, electricity production system hasn't, hasn't been declining very much because an increasing amount of nuclear power generation before 2011 was combined with an increasing amount of LNG and an increasing amount of hard coal. And that's the combination which is needed for the electricity system as a whole. So the inflexibility of nuclear power generation is compensated by black, bad, fossil-based electricity production. And that's why all this put together, nobody can tell me and say um, that uh, nuclear power generation is a green, sustainable, um, and should be subsidized. It is finally a power game, um, and uh, caused by the interests of the French government and uh, their exposition to EDF and uh, their will to save EDF. Sorry for this long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really interesting. Do we still have time? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so what? <laughs> <laughs> Professor. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's great for us. I, I'm just not sure. Yes. No, no, camera. I have a backup here. Oh, okay, so. great. <laughs> okay, so one last question yeah. uh, about the future. Yep. Um, so, we have said that uh, ultimately nuclear power, nuclear energy is not clean, it's not safe, it comes mm. at a great human cost. Yes. And, uh, but still, uh, nuclear power plants are being constructed, especially in Japan, and especially after Fukushima. Mm -hmm. So, do you think we have learned lessons from the Fukushima accident, and how do you think that the nuclear power industry in Japan will evolve in the future? First of all, the question is, who is we? Um, um, but, um, secondly, um, it, it's good to check the current situation and the um, matter of fact is that we have, as I said, uh, 30, ah, at the peak we had 56 reactors in Japan. Um, they are now reduced to 33 and 10 are still or, or already, just as you like, in operation, 10. I think there is uh, all, all new construction is stopped now. I think there are two or three plants, but uh, the biggest issue I think is the reprocessing plant or complex in our model, uh, which is still not finished. But I think uh, the Japanese government will push to, to complete it and to make uh, the processing plant in our model uh, running. Um, even though, just by the way, uh, our model, uh, the reprocessing plant is not only close to Katsudanso um, or to cracks. It's also close to an American <laughs> um, air, uh, air combat uh, uh, plane base and uh, close to an exercise field, um, which is also extremely risky. And um, I've already mentioned the problem with um, using an increasing amount of plutonium in reactors which were not originally designed for using plutonium or burning. I still, I still think that it will be hard for uh, 
uh, pro-nuclear politicians in Japan to uh, justify uh, the building, the construction of new nuclear power plants, but the question is uh, how many of um, the remaining uh, 23 uh, nuclear reactors uh, will start with operation. That's, I think, the, the question in Japan. Uh, I have no illusion that uh, the reigning government, uh, uh, as a coalition of LDP and Komito, um, is pushing towards that, but uh, nobody wants to push it um, uh, at the top of the agenda, uh, because uh, still um, uh, politicians are afraid that uh, it might not be good for um, their results in elections. doesn't mean that the majority of Japanese voters is um, pronounced anti-nuclear, um, but still a lot of worries and fear um, about uh, nuclear power plants is is in the air. Um, that's why all these uh, politicians like to avoid open discussion or even controversies about it. Um, still, the decision taken to restart more or less the majority of remaining reactors is an evidence for not learning the lessons. How much catastrophe do you need to make the big corrections? Um, one argument was uh, if we don't restart we will be short on uh, electricity supply. Um, I calculated it, and uh, just after 3.11, uh, of course there was a shortage uh, of electricity, but as you know, the majority of the uh, Japanese population is, is um, extremely disciplined, uh, in a way unbel unbelievable, imagine, unimaginable for Europeans, I think. And um, the government called for saving energies, and they saved more than 10% of energy immediately. 10%. And uh, this avoided um, extremely uh, shortcuts or cuts in the uh, electricity supply in Japan. So I think uh, the Japanese have, have a strong will and discipline uh, in order to save energy if it is needed. Um, but of course this is not a sustainable solution. This was just crisis management and a short-term response. Um, in the midterm, in the midterm, uh, I calculated um, whether um, the full nuclear power generating capacity can be replaced by other sources. And of course, those sources available at hand immediately were thermal power plants fueled with LNG, oil, and coal. And the existing capacity in Japan is sufficient, sufficient enough to cover 100% cut of nuclear power generated uh, electricity, but it would of course result into a huge further increase of CO2 emission. So it is not sustainable, but it could be the way how you earn time for a few years in order to install solar power, wind power. And what we shouldn't forget is what I already mentioned is reduce electricity consumption, reduce demand or manage demand in a smarter way, right? Still, still when you look at the, de at the data, uh, you see that um, it's always a challenge to match supply and demand. And always it was said you have 10% more supply than to keep a system running without big tensions and stress. And what we see in the last few years is that Japanese power uh, Co uh, power companies uh, being under more competition since the uh, partly uh, um, liberalization of the market reduced the margin to five percent. So they obviously they are able to 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 produce less excess supply, but there should be also smarter ways in in order to uh, save the electricity generally compared to the electricity in demand or use or consumed. 
And again, uh, consumption of electricity is, is a huge field where we can make smart reductions, not saying we, uh, we, we have to take a lot of inconvenience in our lives. I think all the high tech which is in place is unfortunately, and think, just think about the internet, right? We are all using internets now, and, and um, uh, the service uh, or the, the, the cloud centers are huge um, uh, consumpt, uh, consumers of, of electricity. And an irony of these times is that uh, Bitcoin, once created as uh, the way to make finance and financial transaction independent from government, governments or central banks, uh, is now producing uh, a huge amount of electricity and causing, of course, a global warming. And all, all our inter I'm not saying I'm not saying that we we shouldn't use internet, but maybe. Maybe we should think about the consequences of using internet, not in order to say, don't use it anymore or reduce your use, but in a different way. And questioning all things we take for granted. The huge uh, 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 computer centers or service centers of, of Amazon, of Microsoft, of Google, placed in, in areas where, where they believe uh, uh, they, they can afford to use uh, huge amounts of electricity, which of course is finally connected to global warming. Um, again, I believe that uh, the Japanese by history, Japan as an industrial nation, and uh, a, land, uh, a country which has learned in the history, especially after World War II, but also in other historical phases, to use Scarce resources in the most efficient way can contribute most by using these experience, knowledge, and attitudes and values to reduce the consumption without um, uh, lowering the quality of life. Um, one thing which in general is needed, I think, is um, think about new ways of um, living, living more regional, um, reducing, but for that you, 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 have, you have to have not only an understanding but also a kind of transparency about the total uh, cost and consequences of what we are doing. And it, it looks quite obvious that if, if, we ha if we would have a clear picture about the connections and the total cost of what we are doing, a lot of things which appear today extremely expensive will appear to be the opposite. Uh, think, think about what we are eating now. Uh, think about what we are wearing now. Think about what we are doing now. And all the things, again, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying we have to go back to the Stone Ages and, and uh, to sacrifice a lot of things uh, we would miss in, our, miss in our daily life. No, but we can think of, about different ways. And I think younger, now a lot of ideas and creativities uh, released in startups is, is often going, unfortunately now, to, uh, into something of making the quick money. But I think if all the smartness would go more into the smart, enjoyable reduction of consumption of electricity, uh, I think this would, would release us from all the pressures of importing carbon-based fuel or, a, uh, or, or nuclear power generation. Sorry, it gets long again. <laughs> I think we're done. Done. Done? Okay. okay. Oh, it's <laughs> tough, tough to edit all the things. No, it's good. It's good. The moment you have that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just a second lecture.